Welcome to the Outer Wilds. I want to talk about the design of the Outer Wilds, the way the experience and the puzzles kind of blend together and interweave. And uh, I think it's a really important discussion because how we design our adventure games matters a lot. However, that means I'm going to be spoiling Outer Wilds. I'm going to be assuming that you've played it. If you haven't played it, don't let me spoil it. Don't let anybody spoil it. Just go play it. I don't say this sort of thing lightly. Outer Wilds is the best adventure game there is. It's something where I'm not coming down off of a high of just having played it. This is something that I've been playing since before this version was even a twinkle in the dev's eye. And it's been the best adventure game even since back then. So play it. I'm assuming that you've already played it if you're still here. I'm going to spoil everything. Let's get started. Like many of these kinds of games, it starts with a wake-up. Now, the reason so many games start with a wake-up is, uh, well, there's a couple of reasons, but the big one is that it serves as an anchor point. Whatever you see after you wake up is, a, is, is the thing you are going to be trying to achieve over the course of the game. It's, it's the thing that keeps your character anchored. It's what you come back to. It's what you're aiming for. So in, you know, Chrono Trigger, you wake up and it's, uh, oh, you're, you know, safe and happy and you're uh, with someone you love and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's the sort of state that anchors you as you go on your journeys. So what's, what's our anchor point? There we go. It's space. We're viewing space safely from the ground. This is, uh... What we're going to come back to over and over and over in both a literal and figurative sense. Uh, the idea that we are always looking up at space is the core of a big part of this experience. Um, even when we're in space, we're still looking up at space. This is the tutorial section of the game. Uh, and I think this tutorial deserves its own video. So that's what we're going to be discussing right now. Um, we're going to be trying to suss out why this tutorial is here and why it's so good. But first, we've got to talk to this dude. The first person you talk to uh, in a tutorial is generally the person who tells you who you are, what you want, and so on. So here we learn that we're a pilot, we're going to go up into space, and we need to go and uh, get ourselves some launch codes. So we know exactly what's going on right now even if we're not too sure who this person is or who we are. Now, the reason this game has such an extensive tutorial is, uh, well, there's two reasons. The first reason is that we need to fall in love with this world, Hearth. If we're not in love with Hearth, then we're not going to try and save it, and that's the point of the game. So we need to really understand that this is home. These are the people that we love, and we belong here, and if it gets blowed up, we would be unhappy. The other reason that we need an extensive tutorial is because all of the mechanics of this game are what the puzzles use. There are no puzzles like you find in other adventure games where it's like, find a cat and take the cat hair and put it on a piece of, uh, of, of uh, tape and then tape it to your lip and now you've got a Nothing like that. It's, uh, it's all built straight out of the mechanics. So we need to know those mechanics. Moreover, since there's no specific progression in the game, you can go wherever you want right off the bat. Uh, we have to know all of the mechanics, at least that they exist, before we can go anywhere. Since we might go somewhere that requires a mechanic we don't know yet otherwise. Here is one of our overlooks. We get to fly this model ship. One of the things I really like about this game's tutorial is the way that the sequence continually loops back with more and more and more. So in this case, for example, we can fly the model ship, but we don't really know exactly what we're doing, and it's really a huge challenge, as you can see. It's much harder than actually flying the ship, the, the ship you actually get. And that's on purpose, because they don't want you to, um, uh, to spend your time here. They want you to just understand that, you know, you're going to be using RT and all that stuff. Uh, the control, the basic buttons that you're going to be using. But they don't want you to stay here. They don't want you to practice here. Similarly, you may have heard the music kick in as soon as dawn happened. The nights on hearth are quiet and full of crickets. 
and when day hits, they bring this this melancholy music in. It's the same kind of music you'd see in Life is Strange, or here in Life is Strange during emotional beats, because Hearth is intended to be an emotional beat. You have to fall in love with this little hole. We can talk to the various people. The choices that we get... Uh, unfortunately, I blew up the ship already, so I don't get them here. And <laughs> the choices that we get when talking to these people reveal who we are. We don't have to even choose a particular choice. Let me show you. When you come on back, let's open up a bottle of the good stuff. Now here we're allowed to make some choices, and regardless of which choice we take, we understand the sort of person. This is the sort of person we are, and the sort of relationship we have with them. And that's important. It's a way of double loading all of your all of your dialogue. The dialogue options not taken aren't like different personalities or whatever. They are things that even if you don't take them, they still tell you where you stand. And I think that's incredibly insightful and important. <laughs> See? <laughs> This is uh, another one of these cases where they teach you just tiny little bits here and there and then let you get on, rather than trying to shove an entire mechanic down your throat all at once. In this case, we can t check the satellite camera. See, there's a satellite orbiting our planet, and we can take video from it like this. Taking video is an incredibly important part of the game. Taking, well, it's not video, taking, <laughs> taking screenshots is an incredibly important part of the game, but they don't really teach us much about it here. They sort of introduce the idea and then let us move on to talk to people because talking to people is the entertaining part of this particular section and they need us to fall in love with Hearth. I think it works extremely well, and as we move through, we'll see it again and again and again. Here's Nice. Nice is going to tell us a little bit about the fact that there are other travelers. We can have already found out a little bit about this, depending on which direction we went around this little circle here. But the point here is that he'll tell us that the other travelers are out there, they're all musicians, and that we can track them down using our signal scope. But he doesn't tell us how to use our signal scope. Now, we can actually just pull it out and use it. But there are, in fact, uh, dedicated tutorials for teaching you how to use it. And that would be this child over here. I think I just said he a whole bunch. It's not a he. These are all they's. We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope. Because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, can we use yours, please? We don't have time for that tutorial. Um, we do, but we're not going to put it in a video. And then, of course, we've got Galena who is a tutorial for nothing, but I still like them. So uh, this, this whole sequence here teaches us the mechanics tiny, tiny bit by tiny, tiny bit. And I think that, so I don't know that anyone's ever stopped playing in this tutorial sequence and thought that that was all there was to the game. But I do know that when I first played the game, way, way back when, I did think this was all the game was. And when I actually launched into space, I was like, holy shit, this is the first time I've ever misjudged a game this much. Uh, now, of course, that was back when the graphics were considerably rougher, so it was something where I was uh, thinking it was a tiny little indie game. And it, and it kind of was, but it was a big, tiny little indie game, if you get my drift. Here we're going to learn what ghost matter is, and we're going to learn that we can photograph it. As I said, taking photographs of things is a critical part of the game. And of course, we can talk to the boy and get another dose of uh, people, you know, being people, telling us who we are in this society and what the sorts of things we do, uh, you know, how we fit in. And we've got a probe launcher. We're going to have a dedicated probe launcher. Um, our, our ship, actually, we carry one around uh, once we get in our suit. Uh, and so we, they want to tell us, you know, what the heck it is nice and early here. So if we want, we can stay here and just launch probes all day and night. Uh, you know, try and figure out what sort of things are on the planet. But of course, it would be much faster to just get in our ship and go check it out ourselves, which is what we're going to do instead.
We can also learn more about the signal scope and the space travelers over there, but uh, we don't have to, not at the moment. And over here is the proper tutorial for how to move around and do stuff. Um, I don't know whether or not... I think that that tutorial is a little bit annoying, but uh, you don't get it all at once. By the time you get to it, you've already learned the basics of some of the basic concepts, like that you hold RT to thrust and all that jazz. Uh, and I think that that's a good decision. It lets you be annoyed by the, the controls before getting into a space where that matters. And here is the observatory. This is where we get another set of uh, uh, instructions and mechanical tutorials and stuff like that. We can also get a lot of side knowledge. For example, who backed their Indiegogo or whatever it was. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, who these people are that went out ahead of us and the history of our thing. But what really matters in this museum is this statue here. Uh, so Hal will tell us all that uh, they can about this statue. Notice that Hal has four eyes. Our predecessors have three eyes. I wonder how many eyes their predecessors have and what they look like. This sequence here is a great way to teach the player about various mechanics at their own pace. For example, what? What happened to the balls? Well, that's a heck of a glitch. Yeah, apparently the moon pulled them right out of the basin. That's supposed to teach us that we will be able to orbit any planet in, in, in the solar system. Or any planetoid. We don't have to just um, stick in this, in this planet's orbit. Uh, here we can actually see a photograph of a space station. This is the only intact photograph that we'll ever see of it. Because when we were waking up, this is the space station that got hit by the meteorite and exploded. So, uh, the, everything in here is tightly bound to the game and the themes of the game, even if we don't know that yet. Over here, for example, we're the first person that's been able to read this sort of thing. Um, this is the ancient, uh, uh, the ancient runes and, uh, and the Nomai have been everywhere. Most of this game is about rediscovery. It's a, th a theme that we'll talk about in great detail. And so the ability to read from the Nomai's ancient runes is, of course, critical. That said, um, it's interesting to compare this kind of game to something like Heaven's Vault, where rediscovery is also the main point, but the method of reading runes and that sort of stuff is completely different. Heaven's Vault doesn't really have any other mechanics. So for Heaven's Vault, the main mechanic that you can use in order to find things is to translate runes. That's why their translation system is so much beefier than ours. But in ours, we've got all sorts of other mechanics, movement and photographs and all sorts of other stuff. Therefore, the translation system is a lot more lightweight. Here we can learn more about the Nomai, the fact that they probably came from somewhere else because they're not very well suited to this solar system. Uh, they give us technology. I mean, we stole their technology long after they were dead. Uh, and, of course, this, with the glowing rune on the wall. So if you see a glowing thing on the wall, um, you can just walk on the walls. And that's, of course, a critical part of a lot of the challenges of this game. And here we can see a couple of pictures of things that we haven't yet found. Actually, we have found this one, but you probably didn't see it. Because it was over in the corner of a photograph we took as we were playing around. Over here is one of our enemies. Ooh, these guys are real obnoxious. And then here is a diagram of a sun exploding. Hmm. Well, I mean, the rest of this is super applicable, but I don't see what a sun exploding has to do with this game. Over here we see a late game um, conceit, a late game mechanic. We're unlikely to start to explore what this mechanic is until much later on. But as you know, that kind of superposition ends up being critical to solving the deepest secrets of the Nomai. And then we can go on upstairs. Ooh. Here's a map. We have access to this map all the time. 
we can see it here by clicking on a button, you know, thing in the middle. But when we're in our ship, we can just look at it. This is not, this is not a rare situation. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's a fairly small solar system. And it is. It's very tight. It's very dense. Uh, each of the planets here has only a couple of puzzles on it. But the puzzles are puzzles that you're generally going to have to go back and revisit. So um, it's quite a bit more than it might look like. We also have the ability to uh, look at some extras here. For example, here, where it'll t teach us all about the fact that uh, everything is redshifted. You know, we got that expanding universe situation. Uh, and I wonder whether or not there was like a beginning somewhere. If we can project it back, then there must have been a point where they were all in the same place. And if you're reading this for your first time, you're like, oh, well, this is cute. They're rediscovering some of our science. They're, they're big nerds. They're... But since you've all already played, right, since you've all already played, um, you presumably know that this is core to the themes of the game. There's nothing in here that is just a throwaway beat. Everything is core to the game, but in a way that you don't yet realize. And that's kind of the, kind of the point. Here we are. This person will give us our launch codes. As I said... Choosing a response in dialogue elements here, this isn't intended to change the flow of the game or anything like that. It's to tell us sorts of the sorts of things we might be interested in. Just by giving us the option to take these options, we now know that these are things we can do. And therefore, we won't feel like we're completely lost. And that's an important part of all of this. And it's an important part of understanding where we're going and what we want. I forget, can we look through the telescope? I don't think we can. No, we're not tall enough. That's fine. Oh, look at that framing. Oh, that, that seems a little bit... Hmm. I'm sure nothing will happen. Okay. So at this point, you start to get into the more mystical side of the game and start to realize that this game is not just... It's not just space flight. There's some kind of weird glowing statue shit going on. Hmm. Now, of course, the statues are a critical part of the overall story of the game, although it may be a good 10 hours before you figure out why and what they do. Uh, well, you figure out what they do right away, but, you know, what they were intended to do, and why they were created. The statue looked at me and opened its eyes. So, now we can talk about what just happened with someone to clarify it for ourselves. It sounds like we're trying to talk to them about it, but really, that's us talking to the player about it. And he'll also give, or they'll also give us a lead on uh, on someone. So they say, well, you know, you can go find Gabbro. Gabbro will know what's going on. Gabbro is on Giants Deep, a specific planet. So maybe you should go to that specific planet and go search for this specific person. Again, more leads. And now that we've gone through the tutorial, we can go all the way back to where we started, which is kind of the theme of the game. So we'll be right back at the intro place and we'll be ready to go. And we can even talk to people. This person just tells us about another another pilot out there or lost in space. And here we are again. It's even night again. Here's our companion through the stars. You know, I don't even think this ship has a name. I don't think I've ever heard anybody call it by a name. Hmm. And obviously we need to suit up. 
and we're ready to go. And that's the tutorial sequence, at least the first chunk of the tutorial sequence. Of course, in truth, the tutorial sequence lasts for another 10 minutes or so, um, because the tutorial sequence continues until the sun explodes. So as we wander around, we might try and find some of the secrets about this world. For example, I wonder what's down here. We can go check. Or I wonder what's over there on the moon. We can go check. Um, we don't have to immediately... Um... There we are, landing. We don't have to immediately go off and do anything. We probably think we've got all the time in the world, so we're probably just kind of farting around here on the home world, trying to figure out, you know, trying to master our ability of driving uh, and looking around and stuff. And that's kind of the point. And I'm not going to take you through that. Uh, we are probably going to end the video pretty soon here uh, because this is the tutorial video. And we want to talk about all the puzzles and stuff in a separate video. Mm, but here we can see something strange. Here we can either uh, we can either know something or not know something because, as I said, this is all about how you are are able to present yourself and how you uh, work with it. You don't have to um, you don't have to try and establish your personality. It's all about establishing your uh, um, it's all about establishing your your knowledge. So, in this case, uh, we can just go through and fire a. Oh, well, that's not going to work fire a probe and see into dark bramble. Now this particular dark bramble is way too small for us to fit through, but the point here is uh, we can learn even now, even this early on in the game, that there are some really interesting things happening. In fact, we can immediately learn that uh, through this dark bramble is the one of the crash sites we need to get to. In fact, if we were to switch from this to this, look at how much we're learning. We're seeing the harmonica, hearing the harmonica. We're seeing duplicate signal errors, all sorts of stuff. It's really fascinating just how powerful these sequences can be because they're based on the mechanics of the game rather than being based on going in a specific order through specific challenges. But we'll talk more about that in the next video. See you around.